Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that God is with you and, and giving you joy this day. You may hear some funny noises this morning because Dad is up and about. He's sitting on the veranda imitating bird noises, talking to the birds. He loves the birds. They come and visit him from the bush and he feeds them with bread. So he's very happy. God bless his soul. Now, I wanted to come to you this morning. I don't have a dream. But it is on my heart to encourage you. Jesus said, encourage one another. And that's what I'm doing today. Many things are going to be seen between now and when we leave. And remember, the Bible says men's hearts will faint for what is about to come upon the earth. We're seeing the earth being prepared to receive, but it hasn't received yet. All around the world, governments are coming together, forming a one world government. I don't mean that the government of America won't be the government of America and the government of um, Ecuador won't be the government of Ecuador and the government of New Zealand won't be the government of New Zealand. But they are all handing their power to a separate entity simply by following the edicts of that entity. So they are forming themselves into the workers of another entity, one world government. Likewise, the churches are forming themselves into a one world government. We're seeing that this ecumenical um, movement that's been going on for years now. They've already developed the Abrahamic Accord. That's... Um, where the Muslims, the Jews and the Christians under the Pope, and I'm not talking about the true Christians, but I am talking about the Church of Rome, which has labelled itself Christianity. There are many beautiful Christians in that organisation, don't get me wrong. There are many true believers in Jehovah in the Hebrew faith and there are many true seekers of God in the Muslim faith I am not saying that there are not good people in any of those organisations but the organisations themselves are of the devil and they are coming together to form one world church one world religion, just as Babylon, it, it brought in all religions into Babylon. So we're building Babylon right now. We are building the government. We are building the towers. We are building the religion. Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism... Every ism there is on the planet is coming together. They've just signed a document on the fraternity of man. That's a religious group. That is not a world government, but that is a religious group. So all of this is happening. The disclosure, my goodness, the disclosure of aliens coming to earth. The powers on high are coming. Well, isn't this the time they're meant to come? No, they're not aliens that have a little country somewhere on another planet. What are they? They're the fallen angels. And there are one third of the angels of heaven were that. And they are coming, just as God said, their ringleaders were here. They were doing the naughty things. They were cast down. They were put in chains. But that was only 
the few that did that, it doesn't account for the third of heaven. Now, I'm not saying that there's still a third of heaven at the time they were, but God is, is in control. If a third of his angels were cast out, I pretty much think he may have created another third to fill up the gap. He's not going to be running on half strength or thirds, two thirds strength. God will fulfill everything he needs. If he wanted 300,000 and 100,000 left, they were defective. He's going to make another 100,000 as far as I'm concerned. I'm not worried about there being an imbalance, but some people will be worried about that. But God's all powerful. Whoops, here he comes. Right, well, there we go. He's, he's up and about. God bless him. I love that man. God gave me a wonderful father. I'm 96 years old and still going strong. Well, anyhow, off that, what was I saying? Aliens coming, yes, they're not, they're not alien races. They're, they're definitely the fallen angels and possibly their progeny. Um, I don't know that. I'm, I'm only saying to you, don't be frightened. Mankind is going to faint. And by that, it says their hearts will faint. Faint in the old world could mean die. Their hearts will die for fear of what's coming. That's not us. We were not given a spirit of fear. Remember that? God has strengthened us. We will see things and we will see great wonders in the sky. We will see beings doing great signs and wonders. But we are not to be afraid. We put on our full armour of God right up until the moment Jesus comes and takes us home. Doesn't matter what you see. Do not believe what you are told. If it isn't in the Bible, it isn't true. But you will see possibly. I, I don't know for sure, but Things are heating up. The governments are, keep on telling people about alien encounters and spaceships. But remember, don't be afraid. It's not what they say because they're in the lie. It's what God says. Now, God described, remember, I may get the name wrong, but I think it was Ezekiel. Do you remember the Ezekiel wheel? Oh, that's my term, I guess. He saw something coming and it was wheels within wheels and lights and eyes. Do you remember that? He saw that coming. It was angels coming. Do you remember that? Now, he did not faint and die of fear. He understood it was of God. Likewise, if we, if we see these things appearing before our eyes and it will take possibly different forms remember also these beings are shapeshifters the cherubim had four faces and depending on which way they wanted to go they used that face it didn't describe it fully but I'm just thinking this if they're shapeshifters could they not also as the face changed the body change so they went this way they wanted to be as a man they went this way they wanted to be as a serpent they went this way wanted to be as an oxen head so perhaps they have the ability to change completely their physiology throughout history people have recorded that beings change shape in front of them there was an old story um, 
I think it was in England, I'm not sure, but there was an old story of a man, an evil king, who wanted the wife of a neighbouring king. And he had his magician, who was an a very, very, very old, unchanging creature. And he had, he called an, a war against that king. When that king came out, he had a he had his magician or his entity create a fog. And during the fog, he had himself changed. Remember, Nimrod began to change. This king was changed physically to look exactly like the king that came out. And he went in unto the wife. And she said to him, You've just left. What are you doing back? And he said he could not leave without seeing her again. And they went to the bedroom. And when he left, after doing the iniquity, the woman's true husband returned at the end and she reminded him of his visit and he i have never come back and then they knew of the wickedness that had happened there is an ability of shape-shifting movies have been saying it for years but ancient history has said it even the the myths of the greeks and the romans this fellow came down and became a, a swan and raped somebody. This one came down and became a tree and raped somebody. I mean, how a tree rapes somebody. <laughs> that's That's got to be really interesting. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Don't go there. But the thing is, they were able. These were the fallen angels. The deities of these ancient re, uh, religions, they were fallen angels. They had the power still of the angels. They didn't have the full gamut of power because they didn't have the holy power. They only had their fallen powers. So they have these powers. Do you think when there's hundreds of thousands of them up there waiting to come down and release and rule with their leaders, do you think their military aren't going to have perfected their um, manoeuvres, shall we call it, how to frighten people, how to infiltrate. Yes, they're going to be coming, whether or not they come just as we go up or if they start to come while we're still here. doesn't matter what it is. You and I were not given the heart of fear. We were given the strength and we were given the power to overcome. There is a part of the Bible that says, I'm sorry, I'm not a chapter verse person. I can only say the things that come in to me at the time. But there is a part of the Bible, you look it up. Whatever anyone says on this machine, you look it up. That's It's the glory of kings. I'm not a king but it's the glory of some, <laughs> I'll say that, to understand and tell a thing. But it's the glory of you to seek it out. You must do your understanding. Don't let anyone like me because I could be a fool. Sometimes I am. But God uses fools. God uses fools, but this is not foolishness. This is biblical. God gave us the ability that if something extraordinary happens, that we can call on his name, the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the pronunciation, the the language, 
is not the important thing. It's the who you're calling on. But in his name, when you call upon him, it is his power. Even this is something you should remember because even people who are not saved can also call on his name. Do you remember that in the Bible? It is the name, it is him calling on him that gives you the power. It's not in you, it's not because you're a good guy. It is his name. If you call on him, he will do. Now, why do I say you don't have to even be a, a saved person? Do you remember in the Bible where the apostles came up to Jesus and said, Lord, Lord, there's this group of people over here and they're healing people and they're casting out demons and they're rise, raising the dead in your name. What shall we do? And Jesus said, don't do anything. They're doing the work. They're, they're getting a job done, basically. And they're not against us. So leave them to do that. They're not against us. Leave them to do that. The power was in calling on the name of Jesus. They're the same people that when they go up to heaven and Jesus says, and they say, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done this? Have we not done that? And he says, get away from me. I never knew you. They weren't in a relationship with Jesus, but they were working under his name. It was his name. It was Jesus doing the work. It was Jesus doing it. And he can do it. He can do what he wants with anybody. So don't, don't look at the face of the person that's talking to you in any video. You know them by their fruit. But search out the scriptures to see if what they're telling you is from Jesus. Because he uses people. He used Nebuchadnezzar. He uses our kings and our queens. Some people are getting all funny about the queen's dead and now the new king and that. Oh, one beautiful thing. Can I just go there? 70 years the queen ruled. 70 years a generation and she was taken away. God gives us the king's. He puts them in place and he takes them away. He put all of the rulers in place for a day and an hour such as this. People think that they're cunning, they're conniving, they're falsifying documents. Get them there. No. God puts them there. Even if they're wicked, evil kings... He put many bad kings in the lineage of the Jews, ruling them. They got what they deserved. When they were wicked and did not follow him, when they did wickedly and turned their back on God, he gave them a godless king. When they turned their face to him and sought him out, he gave them a good king. He's doing it still. What was before will be again. There is nothing new under heaven. It is always going to be that way. Jesus is our king. We don't belong here. We belong in a kingdom not of this earth. But this earth gets the kings and queens and politicians that it deserves. So we don't worry about that going on, politics. We're not of politics. We have our king. We serve our king. But he is still in charge. So don't be frightened. Don't 
Worry about what's coming on this earth. Don't let your heart faint if it happens before we go. But get ready because I'm pretty sure we're going very soon. There's not... Look, everything is speeding up to such a degree. The film's coming out. Little Demon, the daughter of Satan. Um, Lucifer series on TV. There's another one. I can't even think of what it's called. and It's all about... Satan walking around and these Catholic people doing Catholic things and it's like demonology 101. I, I, I think it's called evil. Yes, it is. It's called evil. Hold on, Dad's coming through again. So whatever goes on in this world, do not be afraid. Jesus is our king. He is coming for his queen. He is coming for his bride. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, giving in marriage, doing all that. As it was in the days of Lot, they were eating, drinking, giving in marriage, working. Before. God took the bout. And then sudden destruction. We've got to be taken out before the sudden destruction. That doesn't mean we didn't see it coming. And he said, as you see it, as you see it developing as the day is coming, you're going to see the development. We're seeing it. Whether we see the aliens land or not, don't worry. But all this disclosure stuff, they're going to try and make the world and you, if you, if it were possible, they want to make you believe that the Bible is not true, but that the aliens are true. Goodness, Dad is in such a happy mood today. <laughs> he doesn't understand the concept of doing a video. <laughs> oh, but God bless him. Anyway... I want to leave you with that thought. No matter what you see, you have your full armour on. If we are hanging on, we can overcome. No matter what they show you, do not believe the lie. They want you to be one government. They want you to be one religion. They want you to own nothing. They want to take everything off everybody and have you rent it back off them. They will own everything and you will own nothing and you'll have to pay them for what you already used to have. And they said you're going to like it or lump it. You won't be able to buy or sell without taking their mark. Whatever their mark develops into from the original into something much more um, sinister, don't know. But they don't want you to have freedom in Christ but you've got it he set you free so come to the cross lay all of your burdens at his feet his blood will wash over you accept the free gift the free gift to you was not free you were bought at a price. He gave it to you freely, if you would accept it. But he paid the price. If you don't respect the fact that he paid a price, you have not received it. If you... If you think you were worthy to receive it, you have not received it. There is not one of us on this earth that has ever been worthy to receive the gift. And yet he gave it to you if you will receive it. That's receiving it with your heart. 
and understanding that you are a sinner and repenting. If you have anything left to repent of, I'm, look, I am certainly not in the know and able to say it's definitely this feast of trumpets. But my goodness, brothers and sisters, it is so palpable that it seems like it is. And that's only, we are talking about days at most, is it a week and a half, two weeks? That's the most we're talking about at the moment. Hang on there. Whatever happens in the world, earthquakes, volcanoes are erupting everywhere. Our news isn't telling us, but I'm getting the reports on my app. I download those apps. You will see earthquakes and volcanoes just thousands a day. I mean, they're coming. <laughs> Just from when I was a young woman, one a year, two a year, you know, it was that. Now it's like today, whoa, how many in the day? 300 worldwide. And they're just the ones reported. Then you get another site and it's got others that weren't on that site. And you put those together and you think, that's a lot of earthquakes. That's a lot of volcanic activity too. Our house is sitting on a volcano. It's not on the books, but my grandfather was a surveyor for the underground mines. And he said, our house is sitting on a dike. A dike is a vent from a volcano. And there were volcanic, um, what did they call those eggs? Um, oh, Thunder, thunder, thunder eggs. They're beautiful round things that when they open up inside are all these beautiful crystals. We used to play with them when we were children. They came from the mountain right, right where we live. We'd go for a walk in the bush and we'd pick up thunder eggs and think nothing of it. But that meant we were living on an old volcano. We could even, that may be how we go up. <laughs> oh, I hope not. I saw the movie where that happened and I didn't like it at all. Anyway, God loves you. He's telling you, be enthusiastic, be encouraged at this late time. He's coming no matter what you see. Yes, if I see an alien standing in front of me, knowing who he is knowing he's a fallen angel or the progeny of a fallen angel, I will certainly be concerned. But God gave us a power in the last days. Remember he said, we will have the power to do miraculous things. This may be the time. Before we go, there may be a little window where we do miraculous things in his name where we cast them out, where we can put a, a hedge of protection around our loved ones, where we can hold our shield up and their arrows can't come to us, where we can put on our breastplate where they cannot deceive us. We will be given the power of Jesus if we are here at that time. So don't be afraid. Be courageous. Put on your armour. Dress up. Dust off anything left on your garment. Take it to the Lord and put it at his feet and ask forgiveness. Repent if you find there's anything you're lacking take it to the Lord even at that last moment you have take it to the Lord he is faithful and he said he will all those who call upon his name shall be saved but that's calling on it and loving it 
if you love the Son, kiss the Son, and the Father is pleased. So, get ready. Take off time very soon. I'm pretty sure we're coming to it. I want to be there. I want you to be there. If I'm not there, start the party without me. But you get yourself there. In Jesus' holy name, you put on the wedding gown. And do not take it off. Don't let them tell you aliens are proof of another civilization somewhere. Don't let them say that's proof that we were made by them. They seeded the planet. No, they seeded their seed in. Theirs are the tares. Yes, they put things in. They put the tares in. Remember the tares and the wheat. God plants the wheat. They plant the tares and they grow up together. So yes, theirs are here too. And they will come back and theirs will join with them. But you're not one of theirs because they're going to be bundled by the angels and put into the fire. If you're here past the rapture, you've got to go through that part of it. Don't ever get pulled out with the tears. Keep your roots in the rock. Jesus. Stand strong if you are left behind. If you know someone who's left behind, warn them that there is that yet to come. But you are not going to be left behind because God knows you love him. So get dressed, get ready, don't take off your dress, don't let the oil run out of your lamp, make sure you've got plenty. Knowing the Holy Spirit, knowing the word of God will fill your cup with oil. My cup, my cup runneth over. There we are. My cup runneth over. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and my cup runneth over. Take that cup with you always. God bless you. I love you and I so want to see you soon. God loves you more than anyone could imagine love being. And Jesus, his son, is coming for you soon. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear your voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let all people rejoice. Ah, oh, come to the Father through Jesus, his Son, and give God the glory great things he has done and he's coming love you all god loves you all bye bye and see you soon <laughs>